Hello, it is the start of September. That means back to school, new teachers, new classes, seeing new friends that you haven't seen in a while, and of course, <coughs> the uncontrollable spread of viruses. Hello, sneezers and weezers. Today is Friday, September 2nd, and in case you didn't know, my name is Joseph Moore. What you may not know is that my family has been sick for a while. My brother Chance has had a sore throat for weeks. Here's his testimonial. Hello, my name is Chance Moore, and I have had a sore throat for three weeks. My brother John also shows symptoms of the Coxsackie virus. What I intend to do with you here is give you a little crash course in viruses. Viruses, which look like this, are made up of... Small molecules called proteins. Proteins are in turn made up of smaller molecules called amino acids. They're very, very small and they're just strung together in a giant chain of things and then they fold up and bend and create shape and structure and it's why your muscles move, it's why you digest stuff, they're everywhere, they're ubiquitous in living things. And you may have also heard of DNA, but there's also RNA, which is kind of a messenger thing, it translates the DNA into the protein. So what viruses are is basically a protein outer coat with RNA inside, or at least that's most of them. What a virus is is essentially a copy me program, so it takes one virus and duplicates it a whole bunch of times in the cell, eventually the cell bursts. Once this happens after a while, the body gets notice of the virus and it starts sending an immune response to them. What you have are white blood cells, and very simplistically, they eat the viruses. And the cells themselves have a defense mechanism against the viruses. What they'll do is they'll encase them in a membrane of fat, and then they'll send a, another membrane of fat full of enzymes to collide with that, and it opens up, and these enzymes, which are also proteins, will just tear apart at the virus and make it useless. I have taken the liberty to compile a list of the five worst viruses that you would least like to get. Number five on the list is the Black Plague. The Black Plague is estimated to have killed at least 75 million people in Europe and this was back when Europe didn't have that big of a population to begin with and during the Middle Ages. What it did is make certain glands swell up like around the neck armpit and groin. It's very not pleasant and you'll die of it. it. Well, obviously, it killed a third of Europeans' population. Number four on the list is smallpox, perhaps an even deadlier virus uh, due to its transmission in the from Europe to the New World. It killed nearly 90 percent of the Native American population. Number three is polio. What this does is it infects the spinal cord so that it'll deteriorate and oftentimes you wind up paralyzed if you get it, if you let it go on long enough untreated. Nowadays there's a vaccine and nearly nobody gets it. Number two is Ebola. Ebola is a particularly nasty filovirus which will just cause you to bleed out and essentially just explode in a body. Your body will just come up into a what goop. It's not tremendously highly contagious, but it's spread through the blood, and it's very good at making you bleed. So e Ebola virus is considered one of the most deadly viruses on the planet right now. And number one, if you didn't already guess it, is AIDS. It lies dormant in your system for years. AIDS is actually the syndrome. HIV is the virus. But it lies dormant in your system for for years, killing off your immune cells, T white blood cells, it doesn't matter right now, and it just kills your immune system and allows other diseases to come in which normally it couldn't. It's very unpleasant and it's very easily spread because people don't know that they have it until a while later. So that's my list. Now you may be asking, Joe, how can I stop the spread of viruses? One is to wash your hands. Obviously, viruses are spread through contact with other people. It's very important that you keep your contact limited, especially if you do have a virus or you're with someone who does have a virus. As Barney always said, keep your germs to yourself. Don't share your germs with anyone else. Goodbye.